I'm here with two of the stars and the writer of Victoria and Abdul, Eddie Izzard, Ali Fazal, and Shrabani Basu. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Shrabani, mm -hmm. tell us about, first of all, the story of Victoria and Abdul and how you uncovered it. Well, it took four years and a lot of curiosity. That's what started me off. Uh, but I wanted to know who this chap was. Like I. You know, I could figure out from these portraits and photographs of his that he's somebody quite special. And there wasn't enough. And uh, then I heard that the letters had all been burnt. So that made me even more curious. If they're burning the letters, there's something in there. So you had so, seen pictures of Abdul and knew about his yes. friendship with it, Queen Victoria. I saw his portraits, that's it. And okay. I knew he's somebody quite special okay. because he's not a servant. He was meant to be a servant. And you don't have so many portraits of a servant. Right. And especially not in your bedroom. <laughs> For sure, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so that, that, that was a starting point. And then, of course, I said, well, what do I do? So I said, go to the top. So I went to Windsor Castle, and I asked to see her journals. And then I asked to see her Hindustani journals, which are these journals in Urdu, where yeah. she learned. I thought it would be a little exercise book. And this lady got in a trolley <laughs> with 13 volumes. Oh, my God. So I was there for a long time. And, uh, well, that you know, really brought the relationship alive for me. So, Ali, yeah. let's, let's talk about your character. So Victoria, obviously, we should mention, is played by Dame Judi Dench, mm -hmm. amazingly. What, what, you have you know, a very extensive background in Bollywood. This is, a, this is a big Hollywood movie for you. What was it like? And what was it like playing against Judy Dench? Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't get better. Yeah. Doesn't get better. I mean, it's Stephen Frears. It's uh, you know Judy Dench, Eddie Izzard, Michael Gambon, Tim Pigott Smith, yeah. the whole lot. And then <laughs> I walk in, and I'm like, oh my god, I got to really, really up my game and sort of keep up. Yeah. But also, I, I love that there was this honest relationship that Judy and I sort of began on. You know. I, I remember walking in day one. We met for lunch. It was almost like an Indian arranged marriage set up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> literally, the parents are sitting, you know, somewhere there, and both of us are in this uh, this lovely countryside restaurant. And uh, she just gave me the warmest hug. I just remember the warmest damn yeah. hug. That's nice. And it was just easy after that. So, so to talk about your character a little bit, not not quite as warm. Let's no, say, I am Ber I Bertie. Think Bertie, who became, who becomes King Edward the Seventh after the death of Victoria. Monarchy did this thing where you'd have one name and then you would become a king under another name. I don't know what. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that actually. Okay, so know. you don't know either. All yeah, right. the whole of our cool. country goes. I don't know. In fact, I think half the monarchy is going. I don't know. Where do we do this? Why not just, <laughs> should have become King Bertie. You exactly. think? But no, I, I don't know. But it's 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 a story of love across this great divide. I play someone who wants to be king. My mother is the king, she seems like she's slowing down, she's eating herself to death, and then this guy comes along and gives her a new lease of life for probably an extra 10 years of life, yeah. in actual fact. Mm -hmm. And I hate him because of yeah. it, because surely I'm going to get the hat, I'm going to get the gear, I can swan around. This is not a really nice guy, Bertie. He's, no. he's had sex all across Europe with lots of people who are not his wife. <laughs> oh. uh, had a chair built for himself, and I uh, which you can Google online. I know. Look for it. You get, oh, you've got he a clap. Yeah. I mean, you go around doing that. I, I'm yeah, the one with the clap. <laughs> How come? Well, Abdul, Ab Abdul, no. yes, Abdul yeah. Kareem, yes. <laughs> but um, but Judy's great because she just it is a Queen Lear of a role. It is mm. just so good. If she's not nominated, I will eat my hat. I don't have a hat, but you know, it's just it, it's that good. And I watched, I watched her because I was looking for any hint of anything. It's just so watchable. If she's still, if she's angry, if she's depressed, if she's dan when she's dancing, mm -hmm. I have to play. Um, Little Miss Buttercup from Oh my God. Dinner it's for, and I had to learn it badly it. so that I could make sure it came over like it was like a party piece that Bertie mm -hmm. had learned. And then she's la da 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 da, and actually Stephen got it set really high so it was really at the top of Judy's mm -hmm. range so that she could hardly reach the notes. Mm -hmm. And then they're dancing away, and she just seems mm -hmm. totally in love. Yeah, it's interesting that you put it that way. Do you think they were in love? Yeah. Because she liked Queen Victoria liked uh, a strong six foot man standing yes. next to her, taking yeah. care of her. Uh, that was the profile of John Brown. John Brown dies four years later. Enter Abdul Karim. I mean, it's some sort and of... And he, you know, takes her yeah. on into Wonderland, really. It's an embrace. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's about embracing yeah. each other. And yeah. that's what it was. I mean, one of the letters I remember, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in, your, in your journal, in the journal. Uh, and she signed off as, with the Queen, Mrs. Hermunshi, mm -hmm. come back, mm -hmm. hold me tight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. that, that was also, I mean, this, this respect that they had. It was just yes. so mutual that I I'd almost want to say it, it was spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that's so interesting about this movie because it is heartbreaking in a lot of ways and it is a drama, but there's actually a lot of humor. But not from it. me. 
<laughs> yeah, have you noticed? It doesn't, there's zero tracking for me. I've even got one line which I thought was my one funny line. I quite often have one funny line and no one's laughing at it. Which line? This line is, you can't take a Muslim to Florence. Now, I think it's funny. I laugh. Well, no, but no I one in the audience does. It sounds like but a I line, think but it's funny because it doesn't make any ridiculous. sense. It's not because of, you know, just because it seems bonkers. It's yeah. a bonkers line. It's a good line to talk about because race and class are so integral to this story. It feels like it's, it's even though it's very much a period piece, it mm -hmm. feels very resonant of course. for right now. Well, we're seeing it all around us, aren't we? I mean, we've got, we're divided on race, class, religion yeah. in, in the UK, in the US, in India, everywhere. And it's also quite important for Indians and you know, British Asians living in Britain to know that Queen Victoria learned Urdu. Yeah. You know, it gives them something to, you know, some stake in, in this whole Victorian history as mm. well, because they'd been sort of wiped out from mm. it. So I think it's important at several levels. Was mm. it tempting to just break out into a James Bond accent and talk to Judy Dench <laughs> like that sometimes? <laughs> she actually, her phone has got ba-da, 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 -da, da -da, <laughs> no. da -da, really loud <laughs> on, on her phone. So when it rings, it just goes off the James Bond thing. <laughs> Kicks out at force ten from Navarone. It really is loud, yeah. which is fun. It's just she's that's still, so cool. She's she is cool. She's cool. Like, what's your coolest Judy Dunn story from the set? Sorry, I'm just going to say this again. Oh, go on. She pulls out a fidget spinner. No. She pulls out a fidget spinner. Really? This, this tiny fidget spinner. She actually, yeah. She, yeah, grandson Sam. She owns a fidget spinner. <laughs> My one was dancing to Ray Charles' track, What I Say, in the makeup track, having just de-rigged, because I, 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 I put on a lot of weight and I had to have a lot of clothes I was wearing and everything. And once I got all that off and she's got everything that she was wearing off, yeah. and I was, I was dancing to this Ray Charles, I just had it playing on my iPhone, and then she starts dancing as well. And I realized this was a teenage girl I'm dancing <laughs> with, because she's in touch with that. She is, she's still, that's her chassis, is a young girl who can play a woman who's lived her life, but yeah. can also play light, young, old, everything, all those emotions she yeah. can get to. But she, we were just dancing away in the makeup track. Thank you guys so much for being here. Victoria and Abdul is in theaters in New York and LA September 22nd and everywhere October 6th.